Hello friends, uh, welcome to Learners Planet. Friends, this is our fourth session for real numbers. In the previous session, we discussed problems based on irrational number, problems based on Euclid's lemma, problems based on fundamental theorems of arithmetic. In this session, we'll be start taking some problems based on all these concepts. So let's begin the session and do revise the previous sessions before coming to this session, right? So let's begin. Now let's see uh, this problem. Show that n square minus 1 is divisible by 8 if any uh, n is an odd positive integer. Now friends, uh, in the previous sessions we have already discussed that every odd integer, just write it over here. Every odd integer is of the form 2q plus 1 where q is any positive integer right so every odd integer is of the form 2q plus 1 where q is any positive integer now let's see this n square minus 1 and here n is an odd positive integer. So I just put the value of n as 2q plus 1. Let's see what happens. Because n is a po uh, like odd positive integer. So I am putting the value of n as 2q plus 1. Now let's see what happens. I just put the value in this first equation. So 2q plus 1 whole square minus 1. So it's... 4q square plus 4q plus 1 minus 1. Right? So that I take 4q as common. So I will be getting q plus 1. So that is actually 4 into q into q plus 1. Right? Now, this expression uh, we have to prove that it is multiple of 8, right? So, see q is any positive integer, right? So, if q is an odd integer, then q plus 1 will be an even integer. If q is an even integer, it will be an odd integer, right? So, either q or q plus 1, at least one of them, uh, not at least, but one of them, exactly one of them will be an even number, right? So, we already have 4 with us and 1 of q or q plus 1 will be an even number. So, 4 into an even number, this expression will be definitely multiple of 8 or we can say it will be 8x, right? So, we have proved that that n square minus 1 is divisible by 8 if n is an odd positive integer, right? So, these are the steps to be written or to be followed and the problem is really easy one, okay? Let's take the next one. Now friends, uh, let's do some problem based on finding out the HCF of the given numbers. Uh, friends, here I will be showing you both the methods that is prime factorization method as well as division method. So both the methods you learn simultaneously and whatever the method that is asked in exam, you can perform the same, right? So it's first in the first case, we have to find out the HCF of 32 and 54, right? So let's go by first prime factorization method. So 32 is what? 2 raised to. 5 right 54 is what it's 9 6 are that means 18 3 are or 27 2 so it's 2 into 3 cube right so this is what 54 now while taking hcf what we do we take the least power of the common numbers now what is the number that is common between these two that is only 2 right and the least power of 2 is 1 only so we'll be taking 2 raised to 1 so the HCF is 2, right? Now, the same problem we do by the division method. So in the division method, we make the bigger number as dividend and uh, smaller number as divisor, right? So let's perform the division. It's 54, it's 32. Now 32, 1 is 32. So we are left with 22. So the remainder is not 0. That means 32 is not the HCF. Now let's go to the second step. Now the 32 will be used as dividend 
I divide 32 by 22, get 10. Still, remainder is not 0, that means even 22 is not the HCF. Now, make 22 as dividend. Still, the remainder is not 0, that means even 10 is not the HCF. Now, we'll use 10 as dividend. 2, 5s are 10, 0. Now, the remainder is 0. That means here, the divisor in this step will be HCF, right? So, it's and we got 2 over here, right? So, we did this problem with both the methods that is by prime factorization method and by division method. This is prime factorization method and this is division method. I hope you are clear. Let's take more problems. Now, we have the two numbers 18 and 24. Uh, let's go by prime factorization method first of all. So, 18 is equal to 2 into 3 square that is 9, 2s are 18. Similarly, 24 is equal to 2 cube into 3, that is 8 threes are 24, right? Now, HCF will be what? Take the number which is common. So, it's 2 and 3. Now, what is the least power of 2? That is 1. I put 1 over here. What is the least power of 3? That's 1. So, it's 1. So, it's 2 into 3, 6, right? So, HCF of 18 at 24 is 6. Now, let's do it by division method. So, in the division method, we'll make the bigger number as dividend and smaller number as divisor. And keep on getting the remainder till we get the remainder as 0. Right? 24 minus 18, we get 6. That means remainder is not 0. That means 18 is not HCF. Now, we will make 18 as dividend and further we will divide it by 6. So, 6 threes are 18. Now, the remainder is 0. That means divisor, divisor in this case will be the HCF. So, divisor is 6 in this case. So, 6 will be HCF. Right? So, here we got 6, here we got 6. Right? So, I performed both the methods over here. I hope you are clear. Uh, simultaneously friends what I do is I just try I just find the LCM also so uh, we'll be able to save some time LCM see this is we found HCF and for LCM we take all the numbers and uh, we take highest power of all the numbers right so we have the numbers as 2 and 3 now highest power of 2 that is available with us is 3 so I put 3 over here and the highest power of 3 that is there is 2 right so it's 8 into 9 that's 72 right so this is what LCM this is what HCF by prime factorization method and this is what HCF by division method right so I performed all the three activities over here I hope you are clear now friends in this case let's find out HCF of 70 and 30 70 is what 14 into 5 that means 2 into 5 10 into 7 so it's 70 and 30 is equal to 6 into 5. So that's 2 into 3, 6 into 5, right? So this is, uh, these are the factors of 70 and 30. Now HCF, which number is common? That is 2, 2 is common. Then we have 5 as common. Now what is the lowest power of 2? That's 1. What is the lowest power of 5? That's 1. So 2 into 5, 10 is the HCF right similarly we try it by division method also so let's make the bigger number as dividend 70 30 32s are 60 10 remainder is not 0 that means 30 is not HCF now let's make 30 as dividend 10 3s are 30 we get the remainder as 0 that means the divisor in this step will be HCF so 10 is HCF right so this is division method this is prime factorization method of finding out HCF now let's calculate LCM as well take out all the numbers 2 into 3 into 5 into 7 now what is the highest power of 2 it's 1 only what is the highest power of 3 it's also 1 what is the highest power of 5 that's 1 and what is the highest power of 7 that's also 1 right so it's 5 2s are 10 3s are 30 30 into 7 210 is lcm right so i hope you are clear with all the three uh, 
like uh, areas now let's take these two numbers 56 and 88 let's factorize them 56 is 8 into 7 that is 2 cube into 7 88 is 11 into 8 that means 2 cube into 11 right so first of all let's find out HCF which is the number that is common that is 2 and what is the smallest power of 2 that is 3 so HCF is 8 right so HCF of 56 and 88 is 8 now let, let's do it by division method so it's 88 and it is 56 so 56 1 So remainder is not 0 that means 56 is not HCF. Now we will make 56 as dividend and we divide it by 32. Still remainder is not 0 so HCF is not 32. Now we get the remainder as 24. Now we will make 32 as dividend. Now it's 8, right? Still the remainder is not 0. Now we'll make 24 as dividend and 8 as divisor. Now we are getting remainder as 0. That means divisor in this case will be HCF. So divisor is 8, so HCF will be 8, right? Now similarly we find out LCM also. So take out all the numbers 2 into 7 into 11 and take their highest powers. So highest powers of 2 is 3, highest power of 7 is 1 and highest power of 11 is 1, right? So it's 8 into 77, 8 7s are 56, I just write 6 and then 8 7s are 56 plus 5, 61, right? So LCM of 56 and 88 will be 616. I hope you are clear. Now let's find out the HCF of these two numbers by division method, right? Since the numbers are big, uh, it will be easier for us to find out the HCF using division, uh, this division method, right? So uh, we have to make the bigger number as dividend. So it's 495. We divide it by 475, right? So it's one time then 475. So we get the remainder as 20. Remainder is not 0. That means 475 is not HCF. Now in the next step, we'll make 475 as dividend. Now let's perform the division. 22s are 40. Then 7, 5. 23s are 60 we got the remainder as 15 that means still the remainder is not 0 that means 20 is not the HCF right now we take 20 as dividend now so 15 1 15 still the remainder is not 0 that means even 15 is not HCF right now we will will make 15 as dividend and remainder as divisor so 5 3 are 15 now we get the remainder as 0. Now remainder as 0, that means divisor in this case will be HCF. So 5 is HCF of 475 and 495, right? I hope you are clear with the division method now. Now friends, let's find out the HCF of these two numbers, that is 240 and 6552, right? Now start with 6552 as dividend and 240 as divisor. Now 240 twos are 480, it's 5, it's 7 and it's 1, right? Now we take 2 as well. That means in the next step we take, I'm sorry, uh, I have yet to complete the division. Now 240 into 7 is 16 80 so it's 2 here it is 8 so 15 minus 8 is 7 so we got 72 as a remainder that means it's not 0 that means 240 is not the HCF right now we make 240 as dividend right 
Now 72, 3's are, 3 2's are 6 and 3 7's are 21. So it's 2 1 6. So the remainder is 24. That means still the remainder is not 0. That means even 72 is not the HCF. Now we make 72 as dividend. Now 24 3's are 72. Now we are getting the remainder as 0. That means divisor in this case will be HCF of the given numbers. Right? Now friends, uh, let's do, take this problem now. Uh, find the LCM and HCF of following pairs of integers and verify that LCM into HCF is product of the integers, right? So first of all, let's take this first one, 26 and 91. Uh, first of all, we find out HCF. So HCF 26 can be written as 2 into 13 and 91 is 7 into 13. So HCF will be obviously 13, right? That is a number common between the two and having least power, right? So 13 is common between the two and the least power of 13 is 1. So HCF is 13. Now what will be the LCM? Take out all the numbers and take their highest power. So highest power of 2 is 1, highest power of 7 is 1 and highest power of 13 is 1, right? So it's 13 into 7, 91 into 2. That means 182 is the LCM of these two numbers, right? Now we have to verify that HCF into LCM is product of the integers, right? So HCF is what? I just calculate HCF into LCM. So it's 13 into 182. Here I am taking product of the numbers. So that's 26 into 91, right? So it's 13 into 2 into 91. Here it is 13 into 2 into 91. That means 26. I just write as 13 into 2. So this is what 13 into 2 into 91. That is HCF into LCM. And product of the numbers is also 13 into 2 into 91. Right? So HCF into LCM of two numbers is equal to product of the numbers. That's verified. Right? Okay, similarly, we take the next example that is 510 and 29. So it's 510 and 29. Now in this case, I uh, just find out the HCF by prime factorization method. 29 is a prime number, so can't be factorized. Now 510 is 17 into 3 that is 51 into this right so it's precisely 2 into 3 into 5 into 17 right so 3 2s are 6 5s are 30 and 2 17 5 1 0 right so 5 1 0 is this and 29 is this right so what is the hcf of these two that's one only because nothing is common between these two except one right so hcf is one now what's LCM? Take all the numbers and give their take their maximum power. So it's 2 into 3 into 5 into 17 into 29. So that's what LCM of 510 and 29. Right? Now let's verify product of the numbers is equal to HCF into LCM. Now product and here we calculate HCF into LCM. Now what's product? It's 29 into 510 and what's HCF into LCM? That is 2 into 3 into 5 into 17 into 29 into 1. That was HCF, right? So if we rearrange it, I'll be getting 17 into 351 into 10, right? So it's 29 into 510. So HCF into LCM is also 29 into 510 and product is also 29 into 510. So it's verified. Right? Similarly, you can make verification for the other pair of numbers. 
I hope you are clear. Now friends, uh, we have this question. That is the application of the previous one. The HCF of two numbers is 16 and their product is 307 to find their LCM. Now we know that product of two numbers is their HCF in, into LCM, right? So product of two numbers is their HCF into LCM. Now what's the product? That is 3072. What is HCF? That is 16 into LCM. So LCM will be 3072 by 16, right? So that we have to calculate. So that's 192. That means LCM is 192 and HCF is already given that is 16, right? So this is how we do we did this problem. I hope you are clear. Now let's take this problem. Can two numbers have 16 as their HCF and 380 as their LCM? Give reasons. Now friends, we should always keep this thing in mind that HCF is always a factor of LCM, right? Just write it over here. HCF is always a factor of LCM right so first of all we have to see that uh, whether 380 is divisible by 16 or not right so if we divide 380 by 16 the remainder is not zero that means 380 is not multiple of 16 right so the numbers which are having 16 as their hcf they cannot have 380 as their lcm right so this is the reason i hope you are clear now in these given cases we have all the four numbers uh, we have four numbers and we have to prove them the numbers are irrational right we have already done these sort of problems i just take one or two of them for better clarity first of all I'll, I take 1 by root 2 right so let's 1 by root 2 is actually root 2 by root 2 so we can say it's root 2 by 2 also right now whenever we have to prove the numbers to be irrational we take a contradiction that is we assume that the given number is rational right so first of all let's assume one by root two is rational right if one by root two is rational we can present this as p by q form where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0 right now the next step is let's eliminate all the common factors between p and q right so we got uh, we get the co prime numbers over here so we eliminated all the common factors of p and q and we get a by b right where a and b are co prime to each other right now a and b are co prime to each other now we just cross multiply this so we'll be getting b is equal to root 2 a that means uh, b square is equal to 2 a square right so that uh, we are getting by squaring both the sides now b square is equal to 2a square that means b square is divisible by 2 right b square is divisible by 2 now if b square is divisible by 2 b will also be divisible by 2 right so I can take b as twice some other integer maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, say x so I take b as 2x 
that means b square is equal to 4x square suppose this is equation 1 and this is equation 2 right so b square is equal to 4x square now i put the value of b square as 4x square in this equation right so b square is 4x square that means 4x square is equal to 2a square that means 2x square is equal to a square right now from this relationship a square is actually multiple of 2 yes because a square is 2x square so a square is also multiple of 2 now here a square is I just write multiple of 2 and here that means a square is multiple of 2 that means a will also be multiple of 2 right so a will be multiple of 2 right now a is multiple of 2 and earlier we have seen that b is multiple of 2 right but here we have taken a and b as co prime numbers now if a and b both of them are multiple of 2 that means they have a common factor as 2 that means they cannot be co prime to each other right so we assume that 1 upon root 2 is rational that assumption was actually wrong that means 1 by root 2 is not rational but it is rational uh, it's irrational right i hope you are clear now next we have 7 root 5 and we have to prove that 7 root 5 is an irrational number so it's 7 root 5 for the similar way we will go um, we take 7 root 5 as an irrational number so 7 root 5 can be written as p by q form where p and q both of them are non uh, like uh, the p and q both of them are integers and q is not equal to 0 right now in the next step of uh, we eliminate the common factors of p and q so we get a by b these are com like co prime to each other so 7 root 5 right a by b is 7 root, uh, root 5 where a and b are co prime to each other right now we cross multiply that 7 root 5 b is equal to a now i square both the sides so it's 49 into 5 b square is equal to a square right so what's 49 into 5 it's 5. so that means a square is multiple of 445 because a square is what 445 b square right that means a square is multiple of 445 or we can say a square is divisible by 445 that means a is also divisible by 445 right so what i do over here i take a as any multiple of 445 uh, say 445 x right so a is 445 x that means a square will be 445 square x square right i just mark this equation as 1 and this is Two, right now a square is 445 square x square now I put the value of a square from this equation into this equation right so what's that will be it's 445 b square is equal to 445 square x square right now this 445 I just get cancel from this that means b square is 445 x square right that means b square is multiple of 445 x square or we can say b square is multiple of 445 now if b square is multiple of 445 b will be 
मल्टीपल ऑफ फोर फोर्टी फाइव राइट दैट मीन्स बी इज ऑल्सो डिविजिबल बाय फोर फोर्टी फाइव एंड अर्लियर वी हैड प्रूव दैट ए इज डिविजिबल बाय फोर फोर्टी फाइव एंड हियर बी इज ऑल्सो डिविजिबल बाय फोर फोर्टी फाइव ना वॉट वी अज्यूम्ड दैट ए एंड बी आर को प्राइम टू ईच अदर राइट सो हियर वी अज्यूम दैट ए एंड बी आर को प्राइम टू ईच अदर बट लेटर ऑन वी प्रूव दैट ए इज ऑल्सो मल्टीपल ऑफ फोर फोर्टी फाइव एंड बी इज ऑल्सो मल्टीपल ऑफ फोर फोर्टी फाइव दैट मीन्स दे के नॉट बी को प्राइम टू ईच अदर सिंस दे हैव वन कॉमन फैक्टर फोर फोर्टी फाइव राइट सो द अजम्पन दैट वी हैड ओवर हियर दैट सेवन रूट फाइव इज अ रेशनल नंबर वॉज रॉन्ग दैट मीन्स सेवन रूट फाइव इज एन इ रेशनल नंबर राइट सो हेंस वी कैन वेरीफाई दैट और वी कैन प्रूव दैट सेवन रूट फाइव इज एन इ रेशनल नंबर राइट Now, friends, in this case, we have to prove that six plus root two as is an irrational number, right? So, uh, let's assume that six plus root two is an irrational number, or six plus root two can be written as p by q, right? Because every rational number can be written as p by q form, where p and q are integers, and q is not equal to zero. Right. That means six plus root two is p by q. That is the assumption. Now root two will be what? P by q minus six. Right. Now p by q is a rational number and six is also rational number. So rational number minus rational number, we always get a rational number. Right. That means difference of two rational numbers is always rational numbers. That means right hand side is actually a rational number, and left hand side root two is an irrational number that we have already proved, right? So root two is an irrational number, and this is rational number. So ir irrational number cannot be equal to rational number. So assumption that six plus root two is a rational number was wrong. Hence, six plus root two is an irrational number. Right? So I hope you are clear. Uh, friends, in this session we'll be taking this much only. In the next session we'll be taking more problems, more concepts. So do revise all the four sessions before you come for the next session. Bye bye.